Hello Megalithomaniacs, how are you doing? So we're back again at Teotihuacan, which is the primary pyramid site in all of Mexico. There's multiple pyramids here. The main pyramid behind me is the Pyramid of the Sun, by far the largest one here. We also have the Pyramid of the Moon. We have the Temple of Quetzalcoatl and many satellite pyramids in this whole area. Officially, Teotihuacan dates to around 200 BC onwards, but they found carbon dating going back 1,436 years. And it's agreed upon that most some of the site is at least 1400 BC. So this puts it in the realm of the Olmec. And two of the things we're going to look at today are the Olmec and their connection with Quetzalcoatl and how that may have influenced this site. And also we're going to look at the Quinomets and Giants and the traditions that state that Giants built this site going back deep into prehistory. We know there's tunnels underneath this pyramid. There's tunnels underneath the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl. They found these metal spheres underneath that one. Here they found multiple artifacts back in the 1970s when they first excavated it. They found cranial deformation, trepanning skulls, sacrificial victims that were beheaded at the moon pyramid at the far end of the site. And we'll also look at some of the geodetic connections here, which make this one of the most important sites in the world, certainly the most important in Mexico. So we're just looking at the sheer magnitude of the absolutely giant Pyramid of the Sun here in Mexico City. And it's in here, actually, that they found these really huge sheets of mica, two sheets. And mica is interesting because it is thought that the specific mineral content of this particular one, this particular type, came all the way from Brazil. Now, if that's the case, that proves a connection between Teotihuacan Mexico and ancient South America and to me that's really interesting because it connects with the Inca, the pre-Inca, possibly the Tiwanaku people with Teotihuacan which is a very similar name in its own right but you can see the landscape around here the museum's closed at the moment I'm just up on this ledge where there's multiple platforms and over there we obviously have the main site next to the giant pyramid here and so the mica connection is really interesting because it acts as an insulator and that alone suggests there's some kind of technology, some kind of purpose and use of these pyramids. We know this whole place here along these avenues here was flooded with water. Uh, and so you would have seen reflective kind of images of the pyramids and all the painted stucco. There would have been reed boats floating around with flowers on and various things. And so it's just an amazing sight. There's hardly anyone here because we're right in the middle of COVID-19. This is on par with the Great Pyramid. It's got a similar footprint to that. It's not as tall, obviously. It's not as big as Cholula. And the Teotihuacan style is now thought to possibly be of Olmec origins. So we're looking at one corner of the Pyramid of the Sun. And you can see the way it's kind of a step pyramid and it's got platforms and it's been massively reconstructed back in the uh, early 1900s and uh, in the 1950s, I believe. It's also this mountain over in the distance is where Marco has done some research, Marco Bagato, and he believes there's, a, you can actually see lumps up there. It looks like pyramids up on there. We've got the moon pyramid in the background and all along here, sort of behind all these trees going in that direction is the long causeway which interestingly is 15.25 degrees east of north, the whole orientation. And Mark Carlotto, who's written a book um, about alignments of ancient sites, believes that this whole kind of pathway, the sacred pathway that goes all the way down the site, the orientation is actually to the old Hudson Bay Pole. And that makes sense when we look at other sites around the world, something I discussed in my book called Earth Grids. So we're just at the base, at the front of the Pyramid of the Sun. You can see that some of the original stones. Now, the stones you see there that make up the pyramid now are reconstructions. These ones are the original ones. They're much bigger, as we'll see at the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, that they're, some of them are four tons, four tons each. You can see first, this is like the entrance into the pyramid itself. It's closed up, of course.
So all these pieces are original from the main pyramid that sits hugely behind it. One of the interesting things about this site, which fascinates me, is the fact that they think maybe the Pyramid of the Sun was dedicated to the god Tlaloc, which would have been one of the earliest places to have him as like a god. He's like a water god, and he's also seen as the big statue that was found at Texcoco, which is now outside the pyramid, uh, sorry, now outside the National Museum in Mexico City. One of the reasons they think that is because this had a mo what we're looking at now is one of the moats around the actual pyramid itself. And it's thought it was surrounded by water specifically and then dedicated to the god Tlaloc. And we find Tlaloc as well on the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl intermingled with the Great Plumed Serpent. It was also on top of the pyramid in 1906 uh, Leopoldo Batres, who was doing one of the excavators here, he found this kind of ceremonial area uh, which he thinks was connected with the, the fire ceremony, which is uh, part of the 52 year cycle of renewal. Where often we find this in Mayan sites as well, they rebuild the pyramid over itself every 52 years, which is part of the sacred cycle of the ancient calendar. So we're just leaving the plaza of the Pyramid of the Sun. We're now going to have a quick look at the Pyramid of the Moon. It'll probably take 10 minutes to walk up there before we head down to Quetzalcoatl Temple, which is one of the main reasons I'm here. There's so many aspects to this site. You can see my other video I did about the site here, where I look at various aspects. This one, I'm going to go a bit deeper into some other areas, specifically the Olmec and the Giants connection. Here we are standing along the Great Avenue of the Dead, they called it which I believe many others do now, that it was actually filled with water. And it was like a water site, much like we find with the Giza pyramids in ancient Egypt. So this is the, uh, the Puma. Can't see it right now, but I'll zoom in on it for you in a second. And this is the Puma Freeze. It's a beautiful piece of artwork. And we know that the Puma, or the Jaguar, was revered by the Olmecs. And there's these traditions of the weird Jaguar, the shamanic principle of blending different animals with humans, with fangs, with cleft lips, and so forth. So this could be a kind of continuation of that tradition. And you can see clearly how beautifully preserved this is. Just on one of the walls and one of the small kind of pyramid structures along the edge of the Avenue of the Dead. We're kind of in between the Sun Pyramid and the Moon Pyramid here. And you can just see how close it is to the Pyramid of the Moon, just in the distance there, probably 200 meters away. This temple is called the Temple of Agriculture, or Agricultura. Now this goes back to 150 AD. It's a low platform, central stairway, and it was covered completely in around 200 AD. Because the reason it's the agricultural temple is because it had images of seeds, plants, and water streams that kind of gave the name to the building. If you look carefully down here, you can see the stucco kind of water you know, you can see there's like waves going through. I find this really interesting, the fact that we're outside the Temple of Agriculture because with pictures of seeds, water, possibly earth energies, I find this really, because this could be proof that they were working with these ancient telluric currents, these underground waters. We know this is on a fault area. And so this charge could be coming up <clears throat> and it could have been inherited, this information, this knowledge, this science from the Olmecs because we know they were doing similar things at uh, La Venta, San Lorenzo and other Olmec sites on the Gulf Coast. We also know that they had like sluice gates and water moving through the pyramids and other structures like we find at Tiwanaku. David Childress and others believe this could prove that it's some kind of mineral processing site. And that's why mica was used as the sheets actually inside the Pyramid of the Sun. It's like an insulator so it could trap telluric currents, energy, and uh, a water kind of, um, you know, you get like this charge from water when you move fast through small channels. And so there's all these different aspects. And the symbolism here does suggest that this might be the case. So this is interesting. This just shows you a map of the San Juan River. And you can see in green, that's where the river originally flowed. And yet the ancient Tiwatakan culture, going to at least 150 AD, 
diverted the river, cut through solid rock, and actually made the canal that we see today that is now the route of the San Juan River. So this is incredible in its own right. And you can see there's probably, you know, the, the, the river itself would have gone through the, um, the main temple here, the main um, plaza we just walked through, which is just over there. And so that's really, really intriguing that we find that they were diverting water to go to certain areas. And I believe they diverted it to some of the tunnels underneath the pyramids. Now this stone has always interested me. It's in the plaza of the moon pyramid. You can see it's like a megalithic block from an earlier time. Supposedly it has very specific carvings on it, possibly a Tlaloc, but we'll check in a moment. But to me, this is almost like the Omphalos. This is the ancient stone that probably marked this site many thousands of years ago. Very, very interesting that it's just here, part of the megalithic origins of Teotihuacan a stone of Tlaloc. Now this is again interesting because he was part, he was like the founder really of the part of the Quinametzin giants. So he goes way back, you know, to another time, another era, third or fourth world where the whole civilization was destroyed in a flood, you know, because the giants got out of control, much like we find with the Nephilim. So I find this really, really intriguing that we find this here, probably very close to its original position. If, because it's such a large piece of stone. Then we have the beautiful Pyramid of the Moon. One of the interesting things about Tlaloc, as well as being kind of linked with the Quinametzin, is that on his robe, he once had like, like a cross, like four lines making a cross, and this would represent the four winds, and he would be seen as striding across the land, according to Aztec tradition, carrying this medicine pouch or bag that was that belonged to Quetzalcoatl. Now, this is interesting because this is like the kind of man bags you see in Sumeria, Olmec land, and other areas. So, again, we have another connection with the Olmecs uh, here at Teotihuacan. So, this is from Teotihuacan outside the front of the moon pyramid. It's one of the Quinametzin giants and is a consort of Tlaloc. But this is incredible. This is, this is like what? 80 maybe 100 tons and he is a representation of one of the Quinametzin giants you just see some of the details in here his hands are just like those at Tiwanaku in Bolivia the turban on his head so we're now walking back down the avenue of the dead from the moon pyramid past the sun pyramid all the way down now which is at least a mile i've got to walk but it's actually in total it's about two miles a bit less the whole avenue and i find this fascinating because if you look at the layout with all the structures the three main temples here the sun the moon and Quetzalcoatl, they are like off center they're not in a line some people suggest they could even be like the pyramids of Giza, like laid out like Orion or Cygnus or other star constellations. So we're just finishing our day here at Teotihuacan, mid-November 2020. And all I can say is that you have to come to Teotihuacan if you come to Mexico. It's well worth a visit. Currently, it's only open till 3 p.m. Usually it's open till 5.30 or so. And I've been here several times. I've been coming here since 2003. But I always find something else here at Teotihuacan that kind of grabs my attention. And it's just the vastness of it, the connection with the Olmec, and now this evidence connecting it with the Quinametzin giants, and the fact that in legend it was built by giants and they were destroyed by a flood and so on and so forth. Plus, we also have the mountain behind the site, which Marco Vigato has looked at, and there's pyramids, tunnels, and statues still up on there, which is aligned precisely. It's almost like this whole site was aligned with that mountain itself. And so there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. So thanks for watching, Megalithomaniacs. Hope you enjoyed our trip focusing on certain aspects of Teotihuacan. See you next time.